Last year, I was invited to facilitate the second annual Value Stream Mapping event for a leading cat litter producer in Pennsylvania. Now, I had facilitated their first Value Stream Mapping event the prior year, and it was such a success that they invited me back to help build and grow a strategy based upon the successes they had had in the prior year. The plant manager was Xavier, and he and I got along fairly well, but I typically didn't get much feedback from him directly. You see, he's a man of few words, and I, as you may know, am a storyteller, so our styles didn't really match up quite well. Alan, the technical manager, worked with me more directly as my point of contact, and I would typically get feedback from Xavier through Alan. Now, Alan and I worked to design this year's Value Stream Mapping event with an expanded focus on including more floor level technicians and a renewed and greater emphasis on going to Gemba, the place where work is done, to understand and resolve issues more so than the prior year where most of our work was done in a meeting room. Sounded like a great idea to me. So we, de we developed the Kaizen to try to emphasize those two key points. Now, at the kickoff of this year's Value Stream Mapping event, Xavier said to the room many words of encouragement and also said how critical it was to get out to Gemba more frequently during this event to truly understand the problems and issues that people dealt with day after day. This would drive a much better approach and strategy for everyone's benefit. He then handed the meeting off to me and I did some training around lean principles and techniques that we could apply as we went out to Gemba to create a strategy for the factory. Following the training, we did take a Gemba walk and I could tell the levels of engagement were far greater than they had been the prior year. Technicians were able to show us the issues they dealt with day to day and the discussions and conversations were much deeper and people seemed to be really interested and aligned with the issues they could help resolve. When we came back to the meeting room, the team mapped out the entire process of producing cat litter all the way from the beginning of raw materials out to the customer and they identified literally hundreds of improvement opportunities that they could make. Then I had them prioritize those opportunities to say which ones would be the most impactful around safety, productivity, customer service, quality, or cost, and let's work on those first. Let's shape those out for our strategy for the following years. The teams then broke up into sub-teams of four to five people, and Xavier had a sub-team that included himself, an engineer, and two technicians from the factory floor. They were working on something in the packaging area for the cat litter line, and they were gonna work on that to improve the situation for those that did the work day after day. Now, there were about eight sub-teams, so as a facilitator, my job is to make sure everybody has what they need to do the work that they've been asked to do. So normally in the first, first go-around, I will rotate through the sub-teams to make sure everything's moving forward and they have what they need to try to solve their problems. As I rotated through Xavier's sub-team, what I noticed was that he and the engineer were cutting out pieces of paper and placing them on their meeting room table. The two production technicians were sitting off to the side, didn't seem like they really were participating too much. I watched that for about a minute and then I rotated through the other teams to make sure they were making the appropriate progress. Some of them had already gone out to Gemba to go see what was going on. I rotated back to Xavier's group and it still was he and the engineer doing work and moving things around on the table. So I stopped and I asked him the question, hey, what are you guys doing? Xavier said, Adam, we're, what we're trying to do is see if we could move some of this equipment in such a way that it would improve the situation in packaging. And I said, well, that's great. I said, how do you know that there isn't something in your way in the process in this room? Well, we think we do. We have our production technicians out here with us. They should know. I said, well, to me, it would seem like your best approach would be to go to Gemba and go verify that there aren't any issues or obstructions in your way. Then you might be able to find something that you weren't expecting here in the meeting room. At that, Xavier grew silent, gave me a bit of a glare, 
looked like he wanted to say something that might not have been too nice, but got up and took his team out to Gemba. About 10 minutes later, Alan, the technical manager, came over with a wry smile on his face. He says, I, I, I see you sent Xavier to Gemba. I said, well, that's true. I said, that, that was our focus. He said, Xavier took me into his office and said, that damn Adam made me go to Gemba. And I said, I guess I did. Am I fired? Alan said, you're not fired. I'm glad you did it. He needs to understand that going to Gemba is just as important for his team as for everybody else. I said, well, that's a relief. Let's see what they come back with. So about 20 minutes later, Xavier and his team came back to the room and now all four team members were engaged. It seems that they did find something out in Gemba that they weren't anticipating or expecting. So they were now able to create a much better solution than had they tried to solve something in the meeting room. The rest of the week, Go to Gemba became the rally cry and people were able to really develop a much better strategy for the plant for years to come. I hope this story provided you with some inspiration to revisit your own processes. I have a lot more I'd like to share. Head over to pi-partners.com to learn how I can help. And check back from time to time for more Kaizen stories.